Hey there, and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing a video that I talked to you guys about, all about the of fragrances that I have in my collection, both full bottles and samples. I decided to keep it to the ones I currently actually have in my possession. I have tried more uh, from the brand and the house, but I don't have samples or decants or full bottles of them. So I'm just gonna keep it to the ones I can actually try and talk to you about just off the cuff over here and give you more in-depth reviews. I've definitely talked about one of them a whole lot with you because it's one of my three that smell like me video and I really, really like that one, but we'll get into it. This is a house that I mentioned before is not everyone's cup of tea. A lot of people, I wouldn't say a lot, but I, I would say there's definitely a large group of people that feel that it's overhyped or that they just don't really vibe with any of the fragrances and I don't fall in that category. So fragrance is, as you know, very, very personal to each person and their tastes and what they like to smell on other people and themselves. So do with that what you will. If you like the house, definitely keep on watching and if you've been curious about the house but find that it's too expensive or haven't had a chance to try it out, then just keep watching. As always, don't forget to subscribe so you'll see every time I put out a new video and we're gonna get started with the full bottles and then we'll go on to the samples as well. So I thought I'd start with the one I love, the one that I've talked about the most. It's also the one I've owned the longest and it's the only one out of the two full bottles that I bought full price. So. It's always a rare occasion for me to actually go into a store and buy a fragrance full price. Um, very few of the fr many, many fragrances in my collection have per been purchased by me full price because I own hundreds of fragrances and it would have just been an extortionate price if I were to buy all of them full price. But this one was good enough worth snagging up. And that is Bal d'Afrique by Byredo. This one really, just is special to me. I know that there was apparently a Zara, I think, dupe of this a couple years ago. It was just, or maybe it was H&M or Zara, whatever it was, I never picked it up, I never tried it. I can't really speak to that or indeed any other dupes because in my opinion, while it is not a seemingly very complex scent, it, is very unique. I feel like I could pick it out of a crowd easily and I always know what it is if I were to smell it on someone else. I think it's simple and clean and a lot of different things, but um, it's actually more complex than people give it credit for. And it's one of the fragrances I think from the house that even people who don't really like Byredo can agree that it is quite nice. So what does Belle d'Afrique smell like? That is a hard question to answer because I think the notes give you a pretty fair indication in the, in the sense that there's um, some citrusy clean notes in there. There's definitely some florals that evoke um, like a cleanliness or a powderiness in here like violet um, and of course that a little bit more of like a fresh citrusy opening but there's also a touch of woodiness to it, which I really, really enjoy. And in general, I would tend to agree that it is very unisex. For me personally, because I consider it one of my, one of my signature scents, it just feels more feminine to me because I am a woman and I wear it often, but I wear men's fragrances that aren't even in any indication supposed to be unisex. So do with that what you will. I don't think it's that sweet or that the florals are super uber feminine, but I would say it's unisex um, at a base. And then I just feel like it, it really kind of shifts into being more feminine when it's worn on a woman. In general, it's very clean. Um, I, I feel like it smells classy and fresh 
and clean, but it never gets close to being laundry-like or soapy in the traditional sense. I, I just absolutely adore this fragrance. I find it to be very bright without being sharp in the way that the, the citruses show up. So I just love it. It really, really blew me away the first time I smelled this. I have to say, I was trying, I was at the counter and I was trying out all of them. And this wasn't even one that I was thinking I was gonna try or get into. I thought I was gonna get one of the other ones. I think it was Mojave Ghost or something. Um, just cause I'd heard more about it in Gypsy Water. Those were super popular at the time I picked this up, but it was the sales associate who was like, just, just hear me out. Try this one because I think it's going to be, and I think it's going to be your favorite. And it was one of those moments where I, immediately when I smelt it, I was like, where have you been? I have to wear some. I'm not going to spray all of them. I probably will, but um, I just, I love this fragrance and I don't see myself ever getting tired of it. But if I do at the end of this bottle, then of course I wouldn't pick it up again. But it's, it's a fragrance that I really, really adore. And for a while there, cause you can see, I put somewhat of a dent in this. I think there was like a two month um, window in my life where I was wearing this every single day to work without fail, like five days a week for two months, I was wearing this. And it was just, a, it like transports me back to that time. It was spring. And it just makes me feel happy. It makes me feel comfortable and it makes me feel like me. And that's what I really, really like about this fragrance is whenever you guys, and I'm sure you've experienced this in your own lives as well, but when you can find a fragrance that just feels comfortable to wear, that is kind of the best indication that it could in theory be a signature scent for you. Now I have hundreds of fragrances. Many of you have way too many fragrances to be a signature scent person, but this would definitely be in the running because I, I feel like it just, it just feels comfortable to wear. And so if you really like soft citrus, um, clean violet, um, but not in any, like it, the violet in this is just, I don't know, it's like effervescent. It, it isn't a super violet forward fragrance. It's one of the notes um, and slightly woody kind of fragrance. I would definitely recommend getting a decant or sample of this or just splurge on the full bottle because this is one that really, really stands out from the entire house um, in my point of view. What I will say about longevity, because I know that it's a huge matter of discussion around that one is Apparently, and I only read, found this out after you know reading uh, other people's reviews and talking to other people, apparently people have a lot of performance issues with Belle d'Afrique. In my experience, I have never felt that way. I have always had like at least a medium experience with it, which, you know, if, if a fragrance is performing relatively normally, then it doesn't even, you know, hit my radar. If it's going to be something that stands out it's either when it's super poor or super beast mode but this has always been kind of like a normal um average performance and i like it as such i mean it's a clean citrus light floral light woody fragrance i was not expecting something beast mode from this but that being said i you know i wore it to work and i still felt like through commute and office stuff, I, it wasn't it wasn't disappearing within the first hour um, of the day or anything, which I definitely have fragrances that have done that. But you know, you should really, if you are worried about that and you're not sure of how it's going to perform on you, then that would be a reason to maybe get a decant of that one. All right, so we're gonna move on to my second bottle. And this one I just bought in late 2020. So it hasn't been even a full year that I've had this one. And that is Blanche. And I actually did have, this wasn't a blind buy either. Um, I haven't blind bought any of my Byredos, which is, well, the two, but uh, I blind buy practically everything. So that is one of the strange things that just happened to be the case is by Rado, I always tried before I buy. 
um, and Blanche was not an exception. So I definitely had a sample that I went through and I tried. I think I might still have a little bit of one left, but I was trying to decide on which next Byredo fragrance I was gonna get to, and it was between this one and Mojave Ghost, and I ended up going with this one. Eventually I would like to get to that, and I do have a sample of Mojave Ghost, so we'll get there. But Blanche is also a clean fragrance, but it is very different to Bal d'Afrique, and I would be more careful in recommending Blanche than Bal d'Afrique. I feel like, and I can smell it so much, it even has great sillage, I don't know, it performs really well on me. Bal d'Afrique and I just vibe together, I think it's stunning, and I think there are way more people that would be theoretically into Bal d'Afrique than Blanche, but I really do like this as well. Now this is a very crisp, white, musky, clean, soapy fragrance. It is very, very clean smelling. I have said before, and I'll say again, that this smells more clean than some of my like very authentic laundry type scents. Even though this isn't that laundry-like, it has elements of it for sure, but it, and it's more soapy, I would say, than laundry-like, to be quite honest, but it really does smell like a sweet, white, clean fragrance. And the sweetness in this is also very subtle. I don't think, um, I don't think it's especially strong, or some people find soapy fragrances cloying, actually, and I don't think this is the case with Blanche, but again, I get really great last, like medium, I think maybe even this Blanche tends to last a bit longer than Belle d'Afrique even. I'm not 100% on that, but I definitely feel like it sticks around, especially if you get it on your clothing. I feel like there's definitely um, a long lasting sillage on it as well, considering it's just like a clean, crisp fragrance. And I would say, if you're trying to round out your collection and you just want one or two maximum clean fragrances, because you're not really into that, this is one I'd recommend because you're getting the quality there. It is soapy without venturing too far into the laundry type sense. I feel like if you don't like the clean range, um, like the brand clean, and maybe they get a little bit too authentic with laundry, you might enjoy this one more. I would also say this is very unisex. I don't find that it leans in any direction. It really just does smell super white and clean and crisp and not too creamy and not too sharp. It kind of toes the line in a really nice way. Also the Byreda bottles, I love. They have magnetic caps. These are the smaller sizes, the 50 mils, I believe. Yeah. And they also come in 100 mils. And I think some even come in larger, like the clones come in the larger bottles, but whatever, I love this one. I also find myself reaching for it um, when I just, I don't know, it's like an after, but a very expensive chic after shower scent, but also when you're just wearing like a very crisp white button down or even like a really nice white t-shirt and jeans, it kind of evokes that kind of vibe. So I really like it. I've obviously worn it less than Belle d'Afrique because I've had it for less amount of time. And if I had to choose between the two, I'd of course choose Belle d'Afrique, but different people are gonna want different things. And if you are more interested in finding something that is more purely clean and doesn't have like the woody citrus oh, florals uh, that Belle d'Afrique has, uh, then I would recommend Blanche instead. All right, so we're gonna get to the next four and these are all samples. So I'm just gonna remind myself and spray them over here, but uh, we're gonna start with Mojave Ghost. Now this is the fragrance that I mentioned. I was trying to decide between getting either Blanche or this one. I will still, I will say that I would like to get this one day, I feel like I always keep this little sample and I'll try it every once in a while and see how I feel. Um, this I think is also kind of like a step, a step closer to being a feminine fragrance in, if I were to, you know, say a particular direction. 
all of these are unisex in the sense that any fragrance is, but I think more women would probably prefer Mojave Ghost than men. It has, is more distinctly floral. Um, and the only, there's, there's like one reason what made me pull towards Blanche is I felt like there was an element to Mojave Ghost that gets um, watery and it's very hard to describe what it is exactly because it's not the florals. I feel like there's magnolia in this. I might be mistaken, but I feel like there's magnolia in this and the florals are really nice. It's also quite clean and and fresh and isn't in any way gonna, you know, become cloying or choke you out. That's what I really like about Byredo fragrances is even, they always have like this freshness to them for the most part, which I really quite enjoy and kind of like a, I don't know, like a molecule type freshness, even though that's not even their vibe, I feel like they're very minimalistic even when they have a whole bunch of notes. And I love that about this. There's just an element to this and that's the only thing that kept me wary is I wouldn't sure, I wasn't sure if I would get um, sick of it because of that wateriness. It's like a certain note or it, oftentimes it comes with lotus. I don't think there's lotus in this, but it gives off the potential of maybe going murky. It never does. It has never gone murky on me but it gives off that potential. And that's what kind of makes me more wary of going for it. This is a super popular one though. Mojave Ghost is one of the two that I'd heard about the most when I was first looking into Byredo years ago. And I can see why it is, especially at the time, I think it was even more unique, but it is quite a unique scent in that it's kind of a fresher, floral that kind of seems like airy and watery and the airiness I love and the wateriness is the only thing that makes me a little bit wary about it but it is the to date at least from the ones I've tried and remember the one that I think I would be most likely to get a full bottle because the days I love it I love it it's just it's got that little quality so if you like that kind of airy watery floral I think you'd like it then we go to Gypsy Water, which was the other um, one of the two that was really hyped. And this one I feel like was hyped even more. Partially, honestly, I think because of the name, Gypsy Water, Mojave Ghost too, but Gypsy Water is just very, it was alluring to people and uh, I think it just captured people's attention and then it just got into like the zeitgeist. But honestly, this is one personally I would agree is a bit overhyped to my nose anyways. This, especially in the opening, is quite um, like green aromatic. It kind of smells like juniper and pine and, and it's like woody citrus. It is nice, don't get me wrong, and especially today, I feel like I'm vibing more with Gypsy Water than even Mojave Ghost, but in general, I feel like the price, this just made it seem like more of a gamble on the price tag. Whereas Bal d'Afrique like blew me away. I, it was just like love it in every single way, shape and form. And this was a like, and for the price tag, I wasn't sure. From what I remember hearing, the, I think it's like Santal something by Zara is supposed to smell like this. I don't know because I haven't smelled it or it's supposed to smell like Mojave Ghost, but there's definitely people that have said that there are Zara dupes to them and I've smelled none of them. So if you have smelled the Santal one, I forget now if it's this or a Mojave Ghost, but I will um, get the name and I'll put it in the description box below. I don't know whether or not they smell the same or I'll just write it on the screen. Um, but to my research and what I saw, there were a lot of people that said it smelled the same to them. And obviously there's a huge difference in price tag. So it is nice. I definitely do like it. And who knows? I mean, I still have that sample and I'll continue to try it out, but it did not kind of break the mold for me in the way that Belle d'Afrique did. And even for a second fragrance, um, I just, 
I felt like maybe I could find something that smelled like this uh, for a different price. And to date, I also feel like that's the worst performing fragrance um, on my skin from Byredo. It doesn't last nearly as long as the other ones, um, so it just also kind of played into that. Then the third sample is actually a one I don't really hear that much about, and it's Inflorescence, I think, Inflorescence, Inflorescence, um, Inflorescence, maybe it's that, Inflorescence, I think. And this is also an Eau de Parfum, I think they all are. So this one, I think I can spray here, is from what I remember, yeah, this one is really nice, but it's a quite, in my opinion, a a mom floral. Um, I feel like this is a nice fragrance, but, could, but it could easily have been a fragrance from like Lancome. I feel like it reminds me of Miracle by Lancome. It just reminds me of like quintessential mom fragrances that I would smell on my mom and moms growing up because it's kind of like a very realistic medley of flowers and uh, maybe like a little bit of like pink pepper in there, but in general, it, it really does smell very realistic as if you are smelling true bouquets of flowers, which makes sense with the name and it is nice, but I, I have smelt this fragrance time and time again. I will continue to smell fragrances like this and for this price tag and the kind of unique quality that I think Byredo can create, this just fell too short for me personally. Scent wise though, I like it. And had it been, you know, if I were in the mood and I'd seen a fragrance like this for $19.99 or something, or even, you know, like under 30, I would pick it up. And there are definitely kind of spring days where I'm drawn to fragrances like that. But from Byredo, it just was a no-go for me personally. And the last one, which I won't even spray, um, because I know exactly what it smells like and I tried it just recently to remind myself, is Pulp. And Pulp is the fragrance I loathe the most from Byredo. I would say it's one of the fragrances that did basically on first sniff make my, my stomach turn. It truly is unique, I will give it that. And I think in the same way that um, Womanity by Terry Mugler is love or hate. This is very much a love or hate and you either are into this kind of scent or you are absolutely not and I am not. So pulp really does smell like fermenting rotten fruit and for some people if that's a very rich fig juice type scent. Um, some people get banana or berries or peach but it really just smells very fruity, but like rotten fruit. And for me, it really did smell kind of like fermented fruit juice or um, the kind of the, the overripe sweetness that you get if you were to like come across a fruit that's going rotten. They actually tend to smell kind of even more sweet because they're so, so overripe. That's exactly what it smells like. And I'm very sensitive to that scent. I mean, I think most people don't like this, the scent of like rotting fruit, but I'm very sensitive to rotting fruit scents. And this is like almost a pure rotting fruit scent. So it really just isn't for me, even sample wise like that. I just kept it for now. It is going to be regifted to a uh, friend of mine. And I really have like nothing especially positive to say about it personally. But if you are into those kinds of scents, then this is like the quintessential one that you need because it is so, so authentic to kind of like fermenting rich overripe fruits. So I hope you guys enjoyed this very thorough Byredo view, uh, review of the scents that I have. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.